Where will the top NFL free agents land this off season? In this video, I predict the landing spots for the top 50 NFL free agents this free agency, giving you my prediction for their destination. My choices are educated guesses based on the schematic and financial fit, as well as my knowledge of the teams, its coaches, and its player preferences. Grok, spike the like button and comment your opinion below. Let's begin. 49er ties with D'Amico Ryans, Patriot ties with Nick Casario. D'Amico Ryans needs a leader for his team in Houston, and Jimmy G is adored by all his teammates. Garoppolo would make the perfect bridge quarterback for the Texans. He can allow the Texans to be more competitive in 2023 and also allow them to sit whichever rookie quarterback they choose in the draft. With Kyler Murray likely missing time recovering from his torn ACL, the Cardinals need someone to be a stopgap starter. The Cardinals hired the Browns' former quarterback coach as the new offensive coordinator. Huh, interesting. Jacoby Brissett was pretty successful inside that Browns offense. Not only was he successful inside that offense, but he is the expert bridge quarterback. Jacoby Brissett sounds like the perfect bridge stopgap solution for the Cardinals. After years of acquiring washed quarterback after washed quarterback, the Colts appear to be all in on drafting one. If that happens, Gardner Minshew makes the perfect bridge option. He played for new Colts head coach Shane Steichen, who served as the Eagles OC. He's got a great personality and deserves a shot given his underrated career stats. There may be questions about whether or not Orlando Brown can fit into the Bears' wide zone scheme, but they have a ton of money. Their number one need is to build the offensive line, specifically a tackle to protect Justin Fields, and hopefully slow down the outrageous sack rate. Also keep in mind that Bears GM Ryan Poles was in Kansas City when they traded for the other OBJ. Caleb McGarry had an extremely low key elite season in 2022, posting PFF's second best run block grade and fourth overall grade. I think the Atlanta Falcons will be all for awarding one of their own, a former first round pick who finally found a great home inside Arthur Smith's scheme. The Jets are all in on competing in 2023. There is only one problem besides quarterback, and that is the vacant right tackle position. Robert Sala is familiar with Mike McGlinchey's game as a former 49er first round pick. He fits the offensive scheme, and if the Jets are going to swing for Aaron Rodgers, priority number one should be protecting him. The Titans need some tackle help really badly, but they can't afford to break the bank long term. Why not take a chance on the former first round pick Isaiah Wynn, who played really well when healthy before last year's weird scheme change in New England. Isaiah Wynn is an ideal fit for the Titans power scheme. One of the indications of a strong Sean Payton team is a great offensive line. He did make Ryan Ramschek the highest paid right tackle in the NFL after all. A young stout right tackle will be a priority, and given their lack of draft capital, Jawan Taylor is the perfect candidate to help protect an aging, less agile Russell Wilson, whose protection may be more valuable now than ever before. The Jags have a clear deficiency, their interior protection for the prince that was promised. If you are going to beat Chris Jones and the Chiefs, you need to make sure you have the best men for the job. Why not Isaac Seumalu, who might be the best guard in all of free agency this year, and he was drafted by none other than Doug Peterson. The Buffalo Bills need to get their offensive line right. I'm tired of watching collapse pockets in front of Josh Allen. Ben Powers can help boost the biggest Bill weakness. PFF's second highest graded pass blocker who plays with power and an edge in the run game. Something the finesse Buffalo Bills could use in their lives. The Cardinals only have DJ Humphrey signed on the offensive line. This offseason should be focused on building the line of scrimmage and protecting their franchise asset, Kyler Murray. Nate Davis is the perfect solution, a young guard who could hit his prime in his second contract, ranking inside the top 25 for PFF the last three years in a row. The LA Rams are tearing the Rams house down, but I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to rebuild from the line of scrimmage on up. LA has had serious issues protecting on the interior. 
someone like Dalton Reisner, who ranked inside the top 20 as a pass protecting guard, could help fix the foundation. I'm not even sure why I added Jason Kelsey to this video. There is less than 0% chance the legendary Eagle comes back to football and chooses to play somewhere else. I mean, imagine him on the Steelers. Given how awesome he was last year, I think he gives it one more go. The New York Jets have a void in the middle of their already concerning offensive line. Connor McGovern should be back to hold down center in 2023. His constant availability is valued, along with his athleticism in the run game, which is a must to execute Nathaniel Hackett's wide zone scheme. If you want to be a great zone team, you need an awesome center. Ethan Pochich broke out in 2022 as the third highest graded center in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns. Bringing him to Chicago, a place that runs a similar scheme and wants to play a similar downhill style, seems like a perfect fit. Sean Payton loves a tandem of runners in his backfield. David Montgomery would make a great one-two punch with Devontae Williams. They both break a ton of tackles and can play on all three downs. Neither have breakaway speed, but both can wear down defenses. It doesn't hurt that the Broncos running back coach coached David Montgomery in college. I don't know about you, but I was not impressed by the genius Mike McDaniel's run game last year. He went from the run game coordinator of the Niners to the pass happy head coach in Miami. I kind of get the feeling he wants to restore some balance. Miles Sanders has the speed and vision to fit his zone scheme and has proven to be able to carry the load on the ground in an elite offense. At one point last season, it felt like no one could stop the human truck known as Foreman. I think he will garner some interest elsewhere, but the Panthers would be foolish to let him walk. The attitude and physicality Foreman brings as a runner gives Frank Reich's offense something similar to what he had in Jonathan Taylor in Indianapolis. Reich took pride in running people over there. I think he will in Carolina. I mean, come on, who would not love OBJ back home with the G-Men? Odell is a superstar that plays best in big markets. And now that the Giants are back to relevance, Odell could be the wide receiver they need to take them over the top. The freshly signed Danny Dimes could use a veteran wide receiver. Odell could be that guy once again in New York. One of Nick Casario's savviest undrafted pickups is now available on the open market. Jacoby Myers is a reliable playmaker who simply finds a way to get open and is a great fit for any team wanting to build a strong culture. Jacoby Myers can provide a security blanket from the slot to the Texans' chosen franchise quarterback. DJ Chark has an intriguing skill set. He's six foot four and can absolutely fly. The Carolina Panthers could use a number two receiver who can take the defense's attention away from DJ Moore. Chark has shown flashes of game-breaking ability and could be a huge boom player for not a lot of investment. Whether they keep Lamar or not, the Baltimore Ravens need to quit playing around and bring in some NFL wide receivers. Juju is a perfect fit for their style of play. He's physical, he's a great blocker, and he can create after the catch. Juju is the reliable chain mover from the slot that the Ravens need. It appears the Packers are all but done with Aaron Rodgers, which means that they have a lot more cap space. One of the advantages to not having a Hall of Famer is all the money you can spend on other positions that you don't typically have. Enter Dalton Schultz, a savvy route running tight end who can find the holes in the zone coverage, a perfect safety blanket for young Jordan Love. The move tight end, who is basically a wide receiver. That doesn't work in every offense, but it does work in Frank Reich's offense. Evan Ingram was rejuvenated in Jacksonville under Doug Peterson. I could see the same thing happening with Mike Gesicki in Carolina. He's a monster, six foot six with quick feet for a big man. He will be a huge upgrade to what has been an irrelevant position in Carolina since Greg Olson left. I think Seattle will target a big name in free agency. They have the money and the draft picks to really go for it in 2023. Their biggest need though is pass rush, specifically a push from the interior. Javon Hargrave has proven that he can succeed in any scheme, from the Steelers to the Eagles. Coming off an 11 sack season, he gets paid to bolster the Seahawk pass rush. Brian Flores was hired to help turn around the absolutely horrendous Minnesota defense. And if he has it his way, he will want some beef up front. One of the first things he did in Miami was draft Christian Wilkins and Raekwon Davis. 
two stout interior run defenders. That is why I believe Dalvin Tomlinson's giant presence in the middle will remain a key piece to the Vikings future. Practically the entire Lions organization is a disciple of the New Orleans Saints, from Dan Campbell to Aaron Glenn. One of their great finds was David Onyemata. Onyemata can be the player Michael Brockers never was and help stabilize the shaky Detroit run defense that ranked 30th in 2022. If Fletcher Cox is going to leave Philadelphia, his new home must have a familiar feel. Jim Schwartz is back as the defensive coordinator in Cleveland, and Fletcher's prime came inside the Jim Schwartz scheme. Cleveland could badly use an interior disruptor who can rush the passer, but more importantly, strengthen their run defense. The legendary Eagle could be playing next to Miles Garrett in 2023. I question how Zach Allen may fit inside Jonathan Gannon's scheme in Arizona leaving the door open for the 25-year-old D lineman to find a new home. His former defensive coordinator Vance Joseph is working for Sean Payton in Denver now. Draymond Jones, likely pricing himself out of Denver, may decide to go younger for the Broncos. Vance Joseph could talk the Broncos into signing this rising star. The Falcons now employ the Saints D-line coach as their new defensive coordinator. I think Ryan Nielsen knows how badly Atlanta could use a pass rush boost, and Marcus Davenport is the most intriguing of the possible candidates. Still only 26, he probably hasn't even hit his peak yet. It's a massive need, it's a scheme fit, and Atlanta has the money to overpay for his potential if need be. This deal probably won't get done right away, but it's hard for me to imagine a better situation than Baltimore for old man Justin Hughes. Houston. He was just one of the best pass rushers in the NFL at 34 years old for the Ravens. Maybe he changes his mind if, let's say, I don't know, the Ravens trade their franchise quarterback or something, but most likely he ends up back in b -more. First Fletcher Cox and now Brandon Graham. The Eagles simply do not have enough room to keep everyone. Graham has been a great leader for Philadelphia. Shane Steichen could use that experience in his new situation with the Colts. The Indianapolis Colts have an opening on the edge opposite Quiddy Pay. I think Graham finds a home in the Colts rotation. The cash-strapped Chiefs were forced to cut bait with Frank Clark. One team that is not low on funds that could use an edge rusher is the Chicago Bears. Frank Clark is a great fit for the Matt Eberflew system, which is similar to what he played in with the Seahawks. And Ryan Poles was a member of the Chiefs front office that traded for Frank Clark back in 2019. When you reach the end of your career, you can get a bit nostalgic. For Bobby Wagner, it all began with Dan Quinn. Both LVE and Anthony Barr are free agents, meaning the Cowboys could use a smart downhill linebacker that allows Micah Parsons the flexibility to play wherever they see fit. Wagner's presence and leadership could be what the Cowboys defense needs to take them over the top. As much as they love him and he loves them, it doesn't seem like Levante David will be back in Tampa Bay. His career and their team are simply going in different directions. A team that could use a win-now player is the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo may trade in the young inconsistency of Edmonds for the steady vet Levante David, who is pretty much the prototype of a Sean McDermott linebacker, excellent sideline to sideline, very smart, and can help clean up the Bills' run defense. The Giants had arguably the worst linebacking group in the NFL last year, making them one of the worst run Ds in football. David Long can help fix that. He was a huge part of the number one ranked run defense in 2022, recording the best average depth of tackle in the NFL. He's also a capable blitzer and coverage player, versatile enough to play in Wink Martindale's chaotic defensive scheme. The Chicago Bears have basically zero linebackers under contract with starting NFL experience. Playing under Matt Eberflus with the Colts, Bobby Okereke is an ideal fit for weak or middle linebacker in this scheme. Okereke shined with Shaq Leonard out of the lineup in 2022, showcasing his playmaking ability and versatility. This just feels like a Bill Belichick move. A Buffalo Bill first round pick with immense potential that has been unable to sustain his glimpses of greatness. Stephon Gilmore, anyone? Just saying the Patriots need an athletic linebacker and Edmonds could provide a huge boost of speed and range while also fitting the prototype for his traditional size profile. The Raiders are going to spend money on their defense this offseason, and if McDaniels is anything like Belichick, they value corners. The Raiders were dreadful versus the pass last year, and Jamel Dean could help fix that. His speed and length 
are ideal for a scheme that mostly wants to play man coverage, and he still has room to grow into a true number one guy at only 26 years old. Brian Flores loves to play man coverage and be aggressive. He knows Jonathan Jones can do that from their days in New England together. On the perimeter or in the nickel, Jones is excellent at staying with the shiftiest, fastest wide receivers in the game and can hold up in coverage to allow Flores' stunts and blitzing schemes to get home. If you want to get the most out of Don Martindale's defense and his creative mind, you need corners. Dory Jackson is nice, but he needs a partner on the other side. Enter Marcus Peters. Peters excelled inside this scheme with Martindale in Baltimore. He has a giant personality that suits New York and can add some swagger to a defense that could use a little bit of a spark. The Detroit Lions are past the rebuilding phase. They're past only adding young players. The Lions need to reach out to some veterans to help fill some of their biggest weaknesses. Their greatest weakness is perimeter corner. James Bradbury is a great fit who could play a little bit of man, but mostly zone coverage and make some big plays in big games for the Lions in 2023. Patrick Peterson had a huge resurgence in 2022, playing his best ball in years with the Vikings. It would be a different scheme and a different defensive coordinator, but Peterson is no stranger to playing man coverage from his days in Arizona, and I think Pat Pete's presence is too important for them to let him walk. The Miami Dolphins have been searching for a competent nickel corner for forever. Bryce Callahan may be the man they have been waiting for. Callahan goes all the way back with both Rolando Hill and Vic Fangio from his time with the Denver Broncos. He's extremely familiar with this coaching staff, this scheme, and has a spot to play in 2023. I'm not sure what the future holds for Byron Jones, whether or not his body can hold up, but a great fit would be with the Seahawks. Seattle loves their tall, long, athletic cornerbacks. Jones fits that to a T. He played his best ball in a zone-heavy scheme with Dallas and seemed to slip up in Miami's man-press system. Seattle could be the site to rejuvenate Byron Jones' career. Jesse Bates seems close with a core of players in Atlanta already, seen at dinner with AJ Terrell, Casey Hayward, and Kyle Pitts. The Falcons badly need a safety upgrade, especially in this new New Orleans-esque scheme. Atlanta has money to burn as well. Jesse may take the Bates in Atlanta. The Philadelphia Eagles simply cannot let Chauncey Gardner-Johnson walk. They traded for him for practically nothing, and all he does is lead the NFL in interceptions in just 12 games. Not only that, but he can be a foundational piece for this secondary for years to come at only 26 years old. He has all the makings of a leader for years with an attitude that Philadelphia fans love. The Bengals can't afford to lose both Bates and Bell, one of the best safety tandems in the NFL. And Bell has arguably been the team's most valuable of the two, considering all he does for the defense in both coverage and run defense. The man is simply everywhere, and he's extremely reliable and consistent. Vaughn Bell stays a bangle. I don't know what it is about this one, but it just feels right to me. The Dolphins could use an upgrade beside Javon Holland in a Fangio scheme where versatility at safety really matters. Poyer has a good relationship with Tua and McDaniel already. He also said that he wants to live in a place with no state income tax and warm weather, so it seems like a good fit to me. There has been some weird, is he a safety or a nickel corner friction between Jimmy Ward and the 49ers. If that discourse proves to be too much, a seamless team switch would be to join D'Amico Ryans and the Texans. As a defensive coach, D'Amico needs a leader and a coach on the field for his scheme out in Houston. Jimmy could provide that while also providing a Swiss army knife safety beside Jalen Petrie. Those are my destinations and predictions for 2023 NFL free agency. Let me know yours in the comment section below. Gronk spike the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more NFL free agency content just like this. Peace.